here. And what we're going to go over today is Power Teacher Pro, the grade book setup. Um, like I said, the grade, I was telling the lady a few minutes ago, the grade books right now are still locked because they're working on scheduling at the high school. So we'll hopefully have those open so you can start setting up your grade books within maybe the next week or so. Um, I'll keep you updated and I'll send out an email to everybody once that happens. So um, what I'm going to go over today is basically just how to set up your classes and explain to you the difference between category weighting and and total point weighting, um, and then we'll kind of just go through the gradebook. I've got a gradebook that I can go through with you, um, and we'll just look at how everything is set up so we can actually see it in a live gradebook. So I'm going to switch over real quick to my PowerPoint, so let me share my screen with you. Hang on one second. Okay, can you guys see that okay? Yes, Kathy? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So basically, uh, first of all, the, whoops, I'm going, it's going way too fast for me. Hold on. Didn't want that to happen. Little glitch. Okay, so in grades 6 through 12, all of the core sections are tied to the NC 10-point numeric scale. So that means that everything in your grade book has to be a numeric grade. When you're creating assignments and actually issuing grades to students, they need to be in the numeric form. Um, and they cannot be a P or an F unless you're doing a credit recovery class or you're giving an incomplete for the class. If there's a special circumstance where you need to use that, um, please let us know prior to you putting that in so that we can make the adjustments and we're not calling you saying, hey, we need you to change that to a numeric grade because you've entered an alpha grade. Um, if you were with us last year, you know that we had COVID-19 grading. That stopped at the end of last year. So COVID-19 grading is not an option for the 2021 school year. So we're going to start out just like a regular school year, putting in regular grades. Um, just as a reminder, the students do have 45 days into the 2021 school year to change any of their grades to either the COVID-19 codes we used last year or to keep the numerical grade that they got. Again, that's only for classes that took place during 1920, but I did want you to be mindful of that because those COVID-19 grades, um, some of those comments that we used are still listed um, in the grading scale and in the comments bank, um, but just make sure you're not using those. Um, any community college alpha grade that we receive, um, usually this is like a distance learning class um, or the kids are going to COA and taking the classes either through distance learning or they're actually going to COA. We usually get those grades back in alpha form, but when they come back to us and we put them in the students historical grades, those grades actually are transferred to a numerical grade um, for Curry Tech County Schools, and, that, and that's a statewide thing. So if they got an A taking a COA class, they're going to get a 95 with us. That's middle of the road. Um, same thing with a B, it would be an 85, C, 75, and so on. So just be aware of that. Um, if you do have, if you're a distance learning facilitator um, or, you know, you keep up with those grades, we need to be consistent um, because we don't want to give one kid a 99 and the other kid get a 95. Um, that all affects their GPA. So we want to make sure that all of those grades are being recorded the same. So again, middle of the road for those. Um, there's two types of calculations that I'm going to talk about today that you can use in Power Teacher Pro. The first one is just total points. That totals the students' assignment grades and then divides them by the number of assignments recorded in the grade book. So like for the ex example that I'm sharing with you, the student received 100, a 90, an 85, 100, and a 60. Those assignments add up to 435, and then they're divided by the number of assignments, which was five. So that gives the student an average of an 87. So it's pretty much just a straight average, nothing else involved just those numbers divided by the total number of assignments. If you're using total points in your grade book, your Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4, and for any new teachers, that's what we call our nine-week grading periods. 
So we have four of them. They all would be set up as total points. And then your semester, and that only comes into play if you have a year long class, would be term weighting. Everybody has an exam. And regardless of if you're using category weights, which I'm going to talk about in just a second, or you're using total points, your exam is always set up as total points because there's only one grade for that particular. It's a reporting term. It's labeled as E1, but it will always be set up as total points. And then the F1, which is the student's final grade, will be term weighting. And that stays the same regardless of if you're using total points or category weighting. So the next one that we're going to talk about is category weighting. And that's when assignments are tagged to a weighted category that you set up within your grade book. So for example, you might have a class that you have classwork for 20, tests for 40%, quizzes 100, and a project for 30%. You can set that up any way that you want. You just need to make sure that when you set up your category weights, when you total all of them, that they equal 100%. They can't be over 100%. Power School and the grading scale does not know how to calculate anything over 100 unless it's an assignment that has extra credit tag to it. Um, so just make sure that when you're looking at those, if, if you make any changes to any of the categories, they need to total 100%. And if you create a category weight um, and don't tag it to any of those assignments, the weight of that category is evenly distributed to the other category weights. So the student's grade is not adversely affected. So let's say, for example, you had a class and for whatever reason you decided not to do the project. You don't have to go in and delete that category weight. That 30 percent power school actually knows you did not use that. And it's going to take that 30 percent and evenly distribute it over the categories that you do have assignments tied to. So it will not make a difference. You don't like I said, you don't have to go in and take that back out. Um, or do anything with it, you can leave it and it will still calculate the student's grade correctly. Um, in category weighting, your Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4, again, those are our nine week grading periods, they're all going to be set to category weighting. So within Q1, you may have the first nine weeks as you know, again, classwork and homework, and maybe in Q2, you do have a project. So you can change your category weighting within the nine week periods. You'll just want to make sure that you explain that out to parents, because if you have a semester class and you do a Q2 and that's where your project's going to be, and that's 40% of maybe the student's grade, keep in mind that it'll be 40% only of the Q2, but the parent you'll want to either put that in a syllabus if you give it to them or explain that to them because that's a large portion of their grade. Um, the same with tests. If you weight those heavy, you want to make sure that if you're only given one test, a parent understands that, that test. If you have a test in Q2 and you've weighted test 50 percent, that's half of that student's nine week grade. So just make sure that you understand that and the parents know your, your weighting system so that they're not shocked if a kid's doing great all along and then they bomb on a test. Um, you know, they need to understand the weighting of that. Um, semesters um, for semester one and two for year long classes, they would be term weighting um, because actually what happens there is it takes and averages Q1 and Q2 for semester one and then Q3 and Q4 for semester two. And then, like we said a while ago, our exams, E1, that's going to be total points. And then our student final grade is an F1, and that's term weighting. And for semester classes, that would be like for semester one, it would be the average of Q1 and Q2, which would be 40% a piece. Um, and then our exam grades are normally 20% to total 100% of the student's grade. Now, if you have a class and you don't have an exam, you don't have to put anything in there. Again, Power School reads that you don't have anything in that 20%. So your Q1 and your Q2 would then become 50-50. Doesn't adversely affect the student's grade. It just will not calculate that in the student's final grade. So we're going to move over to a live grade book just so I can show you how some of that is set up. But I did want to show this screen for any new teachers. When you log into Power Teacher Pro, the first thing that you're going to see at the beginning of the year is each one of your classes is going to say a grade calculation formula 
has not been configured. And that's just because you haven't set up your grade book. So if you log in and see this, um, even if you've done it for one class, you may switch to another. You want to make sure you're not seeing this screen after you set up your classes, um, because if you do, it's not going to calculate anything as far as your grades are concerned until you have that set up. So I'm going to exit out of this and I'm going to roll over into Power Teacher Pro. And I'm going to start at the NC Ed Cloud login again for any new teachers that are here. I just wanted to show you the different icons that are within uh, NC Ed Cloud. This is where you'll use your UID and your password to log in. And because you're a teacher, you're going to click on the white icon with the little P here. It says Power Teacher Pro. And when we log into that, normally when you log in to a regular active gradebook, you'll see the students who are in your classes for, so you can take attendance. Um, but this is before the actual school year starts, so I couldn't put anybody in um, to set that up. I'll try to record a video on how to take attendance because there are some changes coming with the way we take attendance and remote instruction. Um, we're going to share out communication a little bit later um, once we get some directions set up. But because we're doing remote learning, there's a new 1R code that's coming down through PowerSchool. And we're right now, um, teachers are automatically, or excuse me, students are automatically by default considered present unless you mark them absent. Um, that's not the case now. Those students will actually show up as not being present and you will have to physically go in and mark the 1R so that the student is present in your classroom. Um, but we are actually creating some directions and some processes for that. Um, but I did want you to be aware of that so that, um, you know, that's going to be different than what you're normally used to doing. But we'll cover that as soon as we get some additional um, direction for that. So we're on the Power Teacher Pro main screen. And over on the left hand side, again, for new teachers, you'll see two different things here. You'll see a launch at the bottom. Don't use that. That's the old launch for the old Power Teacher um, gradebook that we used to use that used Java and we don't use that anymore. So you're going to want to go to the top of the screen and just click on your Power Teacher Pro button and that's going to open your gradebook. And so again, some of this is review, but for new teachers, um, on the left hand side, you're going to see all of these little uh, icons. They're called grading charms or charms. The first one's grading. But if I ever send out directions and I'm asking you to click on a charm, that's what I'm talking about. Um, and then on the top of the screen, if you click the drop down, you'll see all of the courses that you have been assigned. Um, just to explain what this means, the one would be first period. A through E means it's offered Monday through Friday and the course name. And it's for semester one and it's taught at Curry Tuck County High School. And you'll see that I've got some other ones in here that say GES. This was a training uh, grade book that I set up. So I did some elementary for some elementary school training. But that's what you're going to see. Um, now, if you're working in your classes, and let's say, for example, you maybe have three separate English classes and you need a way to differentiate them for yourself, you can always go in and just click the class, click on a class, and then come over to settings and go to class descriptions. And I can change that. So maybe I want to change that to, um, let's just say 11, maybe I have a class of just 10th grade students, which English student normally should be 10th grade, but just as an example. So whatever you want to type in there, you can. Um, you can put a description in for your classroom here or any, any type of description that you want to put, but just be mindful that the parents see that in the parent portal. Um, so when I do that and I click save, now at the top you'll see that it comes up English to 10th grade. Um, if for some reason I wanted to go back and take that out, I just go back to the same uh, class description, take it out, save, and it'll go back to the original name that it was given. Um, over here on the right, you see the create. You can create assignments here. And then a few minutes, I'm going to talk to you about category weights. Um, and if you're using those, how you can copy those from one class to the next. So you don't have to go into each term and set that up. Um, there's a little question mark up here. If you need any kind of help, if you click it, It'll actually, if you type in what you're looking help for, it will direct you to different areas, um, you know, so you can find some help. And then, of course, when you click over here on your name, this is where you sign out. And make sure when you're signing out, a lot of times people just tend to go up here and click on the X and shut that down. 
That really doesn't close out Power Teacher Pro. It really keeps it open for 30 minutes to an hour. And sometimes that can cause glitches in the system overnight when it refreshes. So just get in the habit of making sure that you are signing out correctly by clicking on the sign out button over here. So let's actually go in and look at setting up this English 2 class. So for this class, we want to maybe set up category weighting. So we're going to go to settings. And then we're going to do traditional grade calculation. And this is where I'm going to start to set up my class. So I'm actually going to set this up. I've actually worked some in this, but normally you see that screen that I just showed you a few minutes ago telling me that it was not set up. But I need to go in and I need to create my category weights because I'm going to use that for English too. So I'm going to go to the right and I'm going to click on the pencil icon. And you can see I've already set some up here, but Let's just say I wanted to do classwork, test, and quiz. And right now, all of that totals 100, which it always has to. But if I wanted to add, say, maybe a project, the way that you add the categories is you click the little plus icon here, and you'll see another one pops up. But I need to check. Actually, I added two. Sorry about that. Let me take this out. And because I'm using category weights, I need to change that to category weighting. And maybe I've decided now I want to add a project. So when I add the project, I'm going to need to go in here. Maybe I only want that to be 10% of the student's grade. Well, because I've changed that to 10, I have to go in and take away some weighting from something else because I cannot exceed 100. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to take 10 away from quizzes. So now I've still got 100. So, and I've got projects included. So if you're using category weights, you can create all of these. You don't have to use them. You can make up your own. There are some predefined that have been um, pushed down from the LEA, but this is totally up to you. You just want to make sure if you're using category weighting that all of your types for each Q1 or Q2, Q3 or Q4 reporting term, they're set to category weighting and all of this totals 100%. Again, make sure that you click down here and you save it. And then you're also going to want to do that for Q2. And then because at the high school we have an exam, we said that exams need to be total points. So I would go in here and click on the little pencil, make sure that this says total points, and my weight is 1, which is 100%. You don't want to change that because they only have one exam, and that counts as 20% of their grade. So I'm going to save that. Now I'm going to look at term weighting. So what F1 is, is a combination of my Q1, my Q2, and my exam. And again, the goal is to get back to 100%. So because we know exams are 20% of a student's grade, Q2 and Q1 need to be 40% when I'm setting up my F1 term weighting. So I'm going to go over to the right, click on the pencil. Again, F1 term weighting, I'm telling it what I want it to average. I want it to do Q1 is 40%. I want to do Q2 is 40%. And then my exam is going to be 20%. And then I'm going to click Save. That needs to be consistent throughout your classes um, because you know our final exams, usually when we have EOCs, that is 20% of the student's final grade. If for whatever reason, because this year we don't know what's going to happen with testing or what's, you know, if we're going to even do that. Um, if we don't have a final grade, that's okay. You don't have to put anything in the exam grade. Um, you can leave that blank. And if you do that, then PowerSchool knows to take Q1 and Q2 and revert that to 50-50 so that the student still will receive a final grade. You don't have to change anything in your grade book. You would leave everything as it is. Now, if I wanted to do total points, and I'm going to switch to an elementary school grade, just disregard that. I just want to show this to you. Um, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. Um, I'm going to do Q1, and I'm just going to go total points. And this is pretty straightforward. All you'll want to do here is make sure that your Q1 is set up for total points, and it's 100%. Actually, that should just be 1, 100%, and save that. And the same for Q2. Q3 and Q4, there's no categories involved in that. You can't combine category weighting and total points within the same term. 
Now I will tell you that you can combine, if you wanted to do Q1 as category weighting and Q2 as total points, but I don't recommend that because both of those are combined together to create a student's F1 grade. And you need to be able to explain that to a parent. So if you're using combinations of how you calculate the grade, that's okay. You just want to make sure that you know what you're doing when you go to explain that to the parent. So my recommendation is if you're using category weighting, you need to do it for each reporting term. So that's consistent. If you're using total points, you would do that same thing. So I'll stop for a second and take any questions that you might have um, as far as category weighting is concerned. Um, I have also a sheet that I'll share with you all um, that basically breaks down how each one of these reporting terms should be set up because also if you have a year long class, um, let me find a year long class. I think this one's it. Yes. If you have a year long class, then you also have to contend with your semesters. So your semesters for the category weighting, that's going to be term weighting as well because semester two is just like an F1. I've got to do Q1 and Q2 to get to S2, and then I have to do, or S1, excuse me, and then I have to do Q3 and Q4 to get to S2. Then what happens is the system takes S1 and S2, which are both term weighted, and gives me an F1 grade. So it's taking 50% of S1 and 50% of S2 to give me 100% of F1. So again, I've got a sheet that kind of breaks that down for you and makes that a little bit easier to understand. Um, but you'll want to be mindful of whatever class you're teaching. Most of you, I think, have semester classes. So you're only going to be working with Q1, Q2, or Q3 and Q3. Yeah, say that fast three times. And Q4, and then your exam and your final grade. So I'll stop for a second and I'll field any questions that you all have about your grade book set up this far. Anybody have any questions? It's quiet. We got it. Any questions, Kathy? No? Um, the, there was one question. Um, Paulette said, on the name where you sign out, it also mentions that there's a font size. Paulette mentioned that. Yes. And yes. Um, then Ms. Brinker asked if um, the, she was going to use the same grading formula. So you may have answered yeah. that for her. Yeah. And, and I know uh, Ms. Brinker had asked me one time, too, about total points and in, in, um, category weighting. And yes, you do use total points when you're actually, regardless of whether you're doing total point calculation or you're doing weighted calculation, you'll always do, in my mind, like total points is like 100 or a 99. So you're actually going to always give the numerical grade. The weighting will then just determine if you're using categories, it would be category weighting or total points. Um, and then I feel like I'm jumping around, but what uh, Kathy said about um, Paulette mentioning the different view sizes, you can click on these and make the screen smaller or larger. Um, just by doing that. So if you need to make that bigger to see, you can definitely do that. Um, and then once you have set up your reporting terms, I do not recommend going in and changing those unless, like I said, for whatever reason, maybe you needed to move a project from Q1 to Q2. Um, just again, be mindful that if you move that and it is going to affect the student's grade, that you're letting parents know that as well. Um, so again, that's just kind of how that's set up. You'll want to do this for both semester one and semester two prior to the year starting. I know we had a couple of teachers last year who just forgot to do semester two and it was kind of a scramble to get that done. So just go ahead and set up your grade book now. And that way, if you have any questions, you can call me and I can walk you through it or we can talk about it. Um, I hate to put Ms. Wagner and Ms. Crank on the spot, but both of those, them are very knowledgeable and Power Teacher Pro. So um, if for whatever reason I'm not available, I'm sure Kim or Paulette would be glad to help you. Again, they're both very knowledgeable and very good uh, in what they do with Power Teacher Pro. So I'm going to thank them in advance for, for helping me, even though I didn't ask ahead of time. Um, so again, a few things I did want to share with you. Um, let me go to a score sheet and I'm going to have to revert back to an elementary school because that's the way this was set up. And I've got some generic students in there. So I just wanted to share a few things about how the gradebook is set up. 
Um, when you go to create an assignment, you can go up here to the top right hand corner and just click on create an assignment. And that's going to open the box where you actually will set up your assignments. Now, you could, if you wanted to, um, you know, create your name here, whatever you want that assignment name to be. If you're using category weights, you would click this and tell it what category you want that to be. You're going to tell it the score type, which is going to be points. And then you can actually put in here how many uh, points you want that to be. It doesn't necessarily have to be 100. You could have something that you want 10 out of 10. That does not matter as long as everything is set up numerically. And then you can put any kind of description that you want down here. Anything in the description box that you put in, just be mindful that parents will see that in the parent portal. And then if you had, say, three English classes or three math classes, you can actually go up here and click the drop down and tell it which classes you want this assignment to be copied to. So you're not having to create the same assignment three times for three separate classes. So that's a, that's a nice feature. Um, and then you would just go down here and click save your changes, which it's not going to save it because I didn't put an assignment in. Also, something else up here on the Create button, we were talking a few minutes ago about setting up our categories. When you go in and set up your categories for one class, you can then actually go in and set them up for other categories. Um, so you would just go in here and then select the class that you want to copy that from. So say I had set up my ELA class and I also wanted to copy that to an English class. I would just click on my English class here and then I would actually save it. When I come back out of the screen and go back to my traditional grade calculations, that should mirror what my original class was. So you won't have to continually go through each time and set up all of your categories for each one of your classes. Um, another thing just to look at when you're working in your Power Teacher Pro, you'll want to go over to the right hand side. And if you click the drop down, you'll see all of your different reporting terms it will automatically default to whatever reporting term we're currently in. And sometimes at the end of the grading period, you might be trying to enter grades when we've actually moved, say like to Q2 from Q1. And that's fine. You can always just click the drop down and go back to the reporting term that you need to work in. Um, just be mindful of these dates that are up here. This is what drives each reporting term. So for right now, all of your assignments would need to be dated 817 to 1016 if you want them calculated in a student's Q1 grade. Sometimes you'll see that these dates might change because if we have, say, a hurricane and we're out for three or four days and we actually need to change the calendar and that would change our reporting terms, then that would change whatever these dates are. Um, so again, if you look in here one week and, and they're one date, but then we're out for some reason, and you come back in and they're different. That's why. That's all driven by the school calendar. Um, and then also when we have exam grades, let me get back to a high school class so I can show you that. Uh, let's see. And here you'll see like basically I know sometimes when we're putting in grades, in PowerSchool you can't have dates that overlap for any reporting term. So you'll notice that Q1 actually ends on October the 16th. And then Q2 starts on the 19th. Well, that's because there's a weekend in there. And then Q2 ends on the 11th. And then you've got the 14th through the 18th through exams. So technically, you may be trying to key in grades for Q2, and that may be locked. Um, and if it is and you're still trying to key in grades, that's when sometimes you have to call us and say, you know, hey, I can't get in my grade book because um, it's locked. We have to unlock that for you. And the reason that that happens is, again, because those dates cannot overlap. So usually the last week before the end of a semester is when we're doing exam week. So we've got that covering 12-14 to 12-18. So that just kind of gives you a history behind what's in the dates and why sometimes you can't get into different reporting terms and, and just explains how all that works. Um, some other things that we want to look at as in the score sheet, this is actually where you're going to, let me go back to that third grade class where I've got assignments. We're going to go to the score sheet and here's where you'll actually see your students' names. It's going to tell you what term that we're on 
and what grading scale type. Now this says A plus through F because it was an elementary school grade book, but yours are gonna say numerical. So when you go in here to type in a numerical grade, as soon as you click that button, you'll notice it over to the right. And you guys probably got really familiar with this during the COVID-19 stuff. Um, this is called the score inspector. And basically what you can do when entering a student's grade is you can enter it over here. And I'm putting in an A just because this was an elementary school grade book. So you'll be entering numbers. Um, and then once you do that, you'll see that when I click on the box below it, this one turned orange. That's just telling you that you've keyed in a grade, but you haven't saved it. So just make sure that you save before you close out of the screen. If you don't, none of it will save. So some easy things or, or quick things to do, maybe um, if you had an assignment that was due and a student turned it in, but these other students were uh, absent. So we need to mark that missing. Instead of having to go in and touch every single kid to do that, you can actually click on the box go to the score inspector and click the icon for missing, which makes it populate with a little orange box. And then instead of clicking every single one and coming back over and clicking missing, I can do the fill and it will automatically fill those for me. Just be careful when you're putting those in that you don't have a number grade. Maybe student three had an 88 in here and you went to populate it all the way down. If you do, Power Teacher Pro is going to override that numerical grade with this missing. But it will ask you, you do have a chance to redeem yourself if that happens, because it will ask you, are you sure you want to do this? And you can cancel it out and make sure that you still have that numerical grade in there. Once I click save, it's actually taken out all those orange boxes. And now this is just listing as missing. If the student were to come back in and actually turn in that assignment, they definitely can do that but it's still gonna show that that assignment was actually missing when it originally was due. Um, if you need to make any comments about an assignment to the parents, you can click on the assignment and then over here, type in anything that you need to type in to let the, like you can tell the parent that, you know, student is a week behind in their work, whatever you need to do. Um, anything that you type in this box will show in the parent portal um, and you can put as many as 4,000 characters in there. Um, again, when you do that, we'll just put in uh, late by a week. And if I save that, then I've got this little icon up here that shows me I did have a comment for that. Um, and then if you hit on that, if you were to go away from it and then come back, it's going to show you that over here in the right hand corner. Um, some other things that might save you some time when you're entering assignments, you don't always have to go over here and click the box and then put in the grade and then come back to the score inspector and type it in. If you know some of the hot keys like MI, it stands for missing, it will automatically, well, let's, let me do another one because it's a different color. Let me just do exempt. Maybe the child is exempt from that particular assignment. If I type in EX here, that automatically is the same for exempt. So you can see the little gray slash here. So when you're typing in those grades, you can just go right down the row and put in what you need to put in as opposed to continuing to, you know, to open this up. Now, if you were to go in, let's just say you had a student that had maybe a, a 59 point whatever, and you felt like the student did make some effort and, and you need to manually change that grade. Um, you can come in and actually go into the grading column here and I could change that grade to whatever I want it to be. But anytime that you change a grade manually in Power Teacher Pro, you're going to see a little triangle that pops up here in the top left corner. That lets you know that that is manually calculated. Um, PowerSchool will always calculate the student's grade on the fly based on whatever assignments are put in. So if I had another assignment here that the student got another A, again, you guys would be doing numeric. Um, if I had not, save that, if I had not put that um, manual override in, it would still calculate this. So you can always look like, for example, this one, student had an A, automatically calculating it. If I put in something else, whatever is happening, it's calculating that student's grade real time. So you can, you know, look at that and you can automatically tell what that student's um, grade is at, at any given time. So. Any questions about the score sheet and how that works and just some little tricks as far as things that might save you all some time? 
No? Um, also, if you are grading and say it's the end of a nine week grading period and maybe you have just been super busy and have not had a chance to catch up on grades and you know, and you know, after a while on some of these, when you start putting assignments, it, it goes out. Um, so you basically are scrolling to the right to see all of your assignments. As opposed to doing that, you can always do control F and that will open up the find box. So if I wanted to find, maybe I, I know that this is how I spent my summer vacation. If I start typing in how, it's automatically going to go to that assignment and highlight that for me. So if you know that there are specific assignments that you need to grade, you can just do control F and as opposed to scrolling through every assignment, trying to find that, it will automatically locate it for you and take you right to that column so you can do your grading for that class. Um, if you have any comments, if you have students and you need to do comments on them, um, you can actually, I'm trying to find the comment bank on here. Oh, sorry, it's up here. Wait, just a second, let me get out of this. Doesn't like that I did that. So let me just save that, take it out, delete. I know that. Okay, so if you wanted to put in comments from a comment bank, we actually have a comment bank. Um, and these are all, and there are still some COVID-19, um, I believe, maybe they've been taken out. I think they have. There used to be some COVID-19 um, comments in here that we need to put in. But if you know that you use comments consistently um, for a particular student and, and you basically use them on everybody, if you click the star here on those comments, it will automatically move the comments that you frequently use to the top of your comment box. So you're not having to scroll through each time to try to find those specific comments. It will take them and move them to the top of your, just your comment box. So any questions about that? That's pretty much a quick overview of Power Teacher Pro. Um, the main thing that I'm concerned about right now is just making sure that you have all of your classes set up correctly based on the type of class it is and that you understand the difference between category weighting and total points. And if you had to explain to someone how a student got the grade that they got, you could explain that to a parent understanding your percentages of your category. So I'm here to answer any questions that you have. So just let me know if you have any. You guys are awfully quiet. I'm also going to share with you, um, I've got a, a link here and I'll share this, this slideshow with you all because it does have some links um, like for Power Teacher Pro, there's quick reference cards that will help you with setting up your grade book um, and this link here will take you to that. And then I also have um, a Google form set up so that if you all need help setting up your grade book when you, when you start that process, if you'll just click on this and fill out the information I've asked you to fill out, which is basically who you are, what school you're at, and um, what um, you need, you know, if there's a specific problem that you're having, then I can give you a call back and we can walk through that. Um, but again, I'll share that with you all. Um, and like I said, feel free to call me anytime. Um, I'm here eight to four every day or shoot me an email at night if you're at home and I'll try to answer it if I'm online. Um, but I'm happy now to field any questions that you all have or any concerns that you have. You guys made this too easy. Susan? Yes. Hi, this is Tiffany Arbogast. Um, hey. There was a question in the comment section, and I, I, I'm trying to help that person and myself as well, but I want to make sure that this is the right answer. The question was, okay. the is there a list of hot keys that you can, pro can provide us? But yes. when I yes. looked at that little block, though, to the right, uh, I forget what you call that block area. It looks like it's the a first two sector. letters. It's Yes, it's underlined the first two letters. So isn't that pretty yes. much it? So EX is exempt, MI is missing, LA yep. is late. That kind of thing. I've got a little cheat sheet that I actually have. A, um, it, ha it lists kind of all the little tips and tricks that I just went over, but it includes those hot keys. I will share that with those of you that came to the presentation today, but feel free to share that out with other folks. I'm fine with that. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions?
Well, thank you all very much for attending. Um, I really appreciate it. And again, if we can help you, if any of the data managers can help you, please feel free to give us a call. My extension is 1050 and I will be happy to help you set up assignments or anything in your grade book or answer any power school questions that you have. So thanks so much. We appreciate it. Thanks for all you do as teachers. We truly appreciate what you're doing. Um, you don't get thanked enough. So definitely thank you for all you're doing. We greatly appreciate it. Susan, this was very good. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, you guys have a great day. Bye. Bye.